when you close your eyes and watch the breath, you're making a choice. You're choosing to develop the mind as a way to find happiness. As the Buddha said, the wise person sees that there are some kinds of happiness, lesser forms of happiness, that when you give them up, make greater forms of happiness possible. And so you're willing to give up the lesser forms of happiness for the greater ones. Now that takes wisdom, because often the greater ones take time, and they take energy. I mean, simple senses of the pleasure are pretty easy. It's not that hard to find pretty sights, nice sounds. Nice smells, nice tastes. They're all around. In fact, the mind can get very lazy and still find them. But for the pleasure that comes from concentration, that requires work. You have to give it your full attention. And if you notice anything is coming in to disturb the concentration of the mind, you've got to get rid of it right away. So there's work to be done. It requires mindfulness, alertness, ardency. But the payoff is great. You know, it's your ability to realize that the payoff is going to be good. And your ability to talk yourself into wanting to do it, that's where the wisdom lies. We sometimes hear about Buddhist wisdom as being very esoteric, about emptiness, non-duality. But real wisdom starts with a duality. There are things you like to do, but are going to get bad results. Can you talk yourself out of doing them? The things you don't like to do but give good results, can you talk yourself into doing them? Your ability to talk yourself into seeing the, the long term as important, that's where the wisdom lies. So get to know your own mind. Notice when it runs off, why does it run off? What does it run after? What's the allure? Can you see the allure as being empty? Can you see it as being not worth paying attention to? If you can, that's when you're beginning to be wise. When you see how you've been making bad choices in the past, and you can separate yourself from them and say, I don't need to make those choices anymore. That also is wise. All too many people say, well, this is just the way I am. I'm going to stick with the way I am. Well, the way you are is still suffering. Do you want that? If you learn how to get your mind to be willing to give up some forms of pleasure for a greater pleasure, then you find yourself changing. And people can change. In fact, the mind changes so quickly. The Buddha said it can change so quickly, there's no image to compare. So as long as it's going in the wrong direction, try to quickly change it into the right direction. If it's going in the right direction, that's when you try to keep it going on course. If the world were full of pleasures that didn't conflict, then there would be no problem. Like planting a garden. If all the plants got together, and they could live together, and they didn't harm one another. Then you could plant as many plants as you wanted in the garden. The problem is that there are some kinds of plants. Some plants like shade, others don't like shade. Some plants give shade. If you have the plants that give shade, and plant them next to the plants that don't like shade, the plants that don't like shade are going to die. Or even worse, if you like eucalyptus trees, you plant them in your garden, it's going to kill everything else. So you have to look at the pleasures that you go for in life and see which ones are getting in the way of training the mind. Because there are a lot of eucalyptus trees out there, but the plan of training the mind, that's going to give valuable shade, it's going to give fruit, it's going to give all kinds of good things. Just stick with it, and you'll be glad you did, and you'll be glad that you learned how to be wise.